We're going to actually start down in the gym, which was the old library, and before that was the multi-purpose room, so follow me to downstairs. So right now, this space that we're standing in, oh wait till everyone comes through. This actually used to be the multi-purpose room. So this is where davening happened, this is where eating happened, this is where classes happened. Everything was based out of this room um, from 1988 to 1994. And that's when they went and they were like, I think we've outgrown this space. And that's when the first expansion happened and we got the facilities that are upstairs that we're going to go to after. So after this went from being the multi-purpose room, it was primarily the library. Um, so there, if you can imagine, this room had bookshelves all around and a big table in the middle and couches on the side. It was great and it was used as a library until this very expansion and it was turned into our workout room so it's going to have separate fitness hours for men and women um, we have cardio equipment we have weight training equipment all these are hydraulic use so you don't have to worry about slamming your fingers in between weights um, during uses um, we're also hoping to offer fitness classes right now we're offering karate and pilates and we're hoping that we're going to add to the repertoire as it gains momentum so here's our workout room we're going to go head on up to the shelf So right now we're standing in our shul, which was before the expansion used as a shul and as our dining room, um, but now it is primary purposes as a shul. Um, in addition to the davening that goes on here, we have different programs. So we have Supper with Soul, which is where we do um, partner style learning. Um, we also just have Chavruta and other classes that are take place in this building. So any questions so far? Okay, great. We're gonna. What kind of classes take place here? Um, in this room specifically, um, there's not one class. We do a lot of partner learning, which is where two or more people sit down and learn parsha or learn different subjects from the Talmud. Um, there are classes that are taught here in Nida, which is like women and family relations and purity. Um, classes on life and death about famous Jewish women. Anything that you want to study Judaically, you can also open to the community. All right, we're going to head on to the upstairs. So just quickly, I wanted to point out what the lobby is um, this mural that was designed. The artist's name is Michael Muchnik. Um, this is a one-of-a-kind piece. It was designed based on the quote at the bottom, which is from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, that says, where a lantern is placed, those who seek light will gather. And that's what Chabad is. It's the beacon of light, and it hopes to draw in all the students so that way it could continue to emanate the Jewish values. Um, so all around the mural, you'll see lanterns and, and light and a lot of Jewish, like Mizuzot on the doorways and just beautiful pieces to show how, how light gathers and how this building is a symbol of all that light. So we're going to head on upstairs. Um, this is from when we had our, our Torah dedication, and this one over here is from Shabbat 1500, um, which is a regular an annual event on campus. Um, just pictures of, of students doing mitzvot. Um, so over here we have candle lighting, over here we have dancing with the Torah, um, and we hope that as we keep on doing programs to attract student life, that we'll keep on adding to this wall of photos. We're not going to go in right now, they're using this for davening, but in here is our library. The library has books on different areas of Jewish study that you want. So they have Talmud books, they have books on Jewish history, Jewish philosophy books, anything you want, you can find it here. Um, it's a great place to study because the building's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can always sit down during weekdays of Shabbat and, and read up or do your homework or whatever you need to do. So we also have a computer that's in there for students to use if they don't want to bring their laptops back and forth. Okay, and right in here, to my left, is the atrium. Imagine what it's going to be like when there's snow falling or when it's, the sun is streaming through on a gorgeous day and when the leaves are changing colors. Like this building is just so, it's built in such an aesthetic way that you can truly enjoy. Like one of my favorite parts about being here in upstate New York is, is the changing of the seasons and the fact that we are, are, are in nature and being here is a way to just look at it, experience it, and truly take advantage of all the beauty. So when you go there, everybody knows your name. I'm not really glad you came. 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 I'm not really glad you came.
So just two things I want to point out right here. One is the elevator. The entire building is handicap accessible, so that way it makes sure that all students will be able to fully be able to participate in all activities that Chabad has to offer. Um, and also down here are um, the rabbi and Rifki's offices as well as classrooms um, for students to sit. And we have our boardroom down there where all the important meetings of all the decisions making at Chabad happen right in this hallway. So we're going to head downstairs so you can see the basement of the new building. Hey, so just to point out, this is the kitchen in here. Right now it's being used by the caterers that are here for the event, but on any given day we're cooking for Shabbat, we're cooking for supper with soul on Wednesdays, we're cooking for whatever big events are coming up. So right now we're standing in the very noisy and active game room. This also is available for students 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. No matter what time I'm here during the week, whether it's 10 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night, there's always students in here for a game of ping pong or air hockey or whatever it might be. Also in the room back there, we have a big screen TV with couches um, with different Nintendo systems set up. We have, I think, a PlayStation system. We just got a Wii, which is really awesome for students to play during the week. We also have board games. Um, students love to sit here on Shabbat and after services. They'll sit here for the entire afternoon and play Taboo or play Rummy Cube or whatever game fancies them. Um, over here to my right, we have the pizza shop. We're actually going to walk there. So this pizza shop right here, on Mondays and Thursdays, we have fresh coaster pizza made right here. Um, as you can see, here are our offerings on the board. They like to spice it up. We have a soup that's made special every day. There's different toppings that they have. They're also hoping on Tuesdays to have something called Chabad Cafe, which is would offer different food than what's here. Um, so it would be, they're hoping to do like cappuccinos and desserts and sandwich making, um, just things that are a little different. So that way students, we have the kosher kitchen as an option, but it can get repetitive. So here you can come off and get something out of the ordinary and still keep kosher and have it be delicious. Um, over here, just for the visual element, is the television and the couches and the board games where students love to sit and hang out on any day of the week. Also, two more things I want to point out before we head over are a mural which was painted by one of our very own students, his name is Shmuel Bushwick, and it depicts, depicts the, the juxtaposition of Binghamton University, that's our clock tower, which is one of the recognized symbols of the university, and the Kotel in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. And around it are the different, the 12 tribes of Israel, and our very own Bearcats, which isn't a tribe, but a very loved symbol here at Binghamton. And also to that door that's right in front of it, behind the table, that's going to be a Judaica store. Um, so that way we'll have all the offerings to have like tally toe and kitty tubs and, and candlesticks. That way everyone in the community and students will have access to these things. All right, follow me this way. All this space down here has all been transformed into guest rooms. So that way when family comes, when alumni come, when people want to stay, they have places to stay right here in the Chabad house, which is awesome. And then to my right, um, since I think 92, correct me if that's the first year over there. What? Ah, yeah. oh, 92, great. So since 1992, they take at the end of the year a picture of every graduating class just to remember our alumni because everyone that came before the people that are here all did amazing things to help out the Chabad house. So this is just a little way to remember all of our alumni. And they've already reserved pictures for the next three years graduating class. They're ready for us. So any questions about anything at the Chabad House? So this is the official end of the tour.